What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now, first of all, I just want to start this video by saying I hope all of you are staying healthy and safe during this weird coronavirus time. Um, and let's kind of lighten the mood a little bit by making a delicious keto bread. Now, I know I promised I'd have this done a couple days ago, but it took me a few extra days to really perfect it. And thankfully, right now we have something that I absolutely love. So this bread is very low carb, fairly high fat, and very easy to make with no special equipment. No bread pan, nothing, but we'll get into all of that later. So if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight and let's get right into the recipe. All right, everybody, welcome to the recipe for this delicious keto bread. Now laid out in front of me here, I have all of our dry ingredients. And uh, I wanna try something with this video, so let me know if you guys like this style or not in the comment section. As I go through these ingredients, I wanna go through and explain to you why I chose what I chose and the things that I have tried, because I get a ton of comments asking about like variations of the recipe or you know, have you tried using this, things like that. Um, and I wanna give you guys a good baseline for the things that I've already tried so that it can kind of help with your experiments in the future. If you don't like this style, kind of let me know in the comment section, that way I know that you know it's not something you like, but we never know till we try, right? So let's get right into this. Now right here, I have one cup of almond flour. Now the most common question is gonna be, well, why can't I use coconut flour? Um, coconut flour absorbs a lot of liquid, so the problem you're gonna run into is that you need to add a lot of fat, otherwise it's gonna taste dry. And since you're gonna use a lot of it, you have to add even more fat, and basically your bread ends up tasting like olive oil, coconut oil, whatever fat you used, and that just was kind of unpleasant. So we had to settle with an almond flour base. Next up, we have one third cup of coconut flour. Now, if you use pure almond flour, what ends up happening is the bread feels gritty because there's nothing that's got that really fine grain to kind of mush it all together. Um, that's where the coconut flour comes in. It's a lot finer grain and it kind of helps things feel more consistent, whereas the almond flour is a little bit more grainy. Then we've got two tablespoons of psyllium husk powder. Guys, I actually really hate slim husk powder, the flavor of it. Um, I used to actually love it, and then I tried to drink it straight one time as like a fiber supplement, and ever since then I can't stand the flavor. So don't worry about too much of that. What this does is it gives the bread kind of that soft, kind of bready texture. Um, but you will see recipes that use like a third cup of it or whatever. That's insane to me. I wouldn't be able to eat that. It just doesn't taste right. So we're actually only doing two tablespoons here. Here we have one quarter cup of ground flaxseed. I'm using golden flaxseed. Much like the psyllium husk, I used to actually be able to tolerate the regular flaxseed, but once I found golden, I never went back to regular flax. It just doesn't taste the same to me, so best taste, use golden flaxseeds. Then we've got one teaspoon of cream of tartar, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of active dry yeast. I've tried using nutritional yeast, it's okay, but I went back to the regular yeast because the flavor's better. Guys, this actually doesn't do anything but add flavor, so if you just wanna leave this out all together and you don't mind the flavor of almond and coconut flour mixture, that's cool too. And lastly, I have half a teaspoon of salt. Now this is all super easy, guys. Just gonna dump it in this bowl and uh, whisk it to beat any of the clumps out. So we'll go in with our almond flour first, coconut flour, psyllium husk powder, flaxseed, our cream of tartar, our baking soda, salt, and then the yeast. So I'm gonna get all this mixed in together right here and then uh, I'll catch up with you guys as soon as I reset the area here with all of our wet ingredients and show you all the wet ingredients going into this. All right, everybody, we've reset and just kind of set our dry ingredients aside here. Got a small bowl and all of our wet ingredients. So right here, I've got one cup of water one teaspoon of olive oil. I find that this adds just a little bit of fat to the dish and uh, kind of helps with the crust a little bit. We've got three egg whites and one whole egg. Now I tried to use whole eggs originally because I kind of hate tossing the yolk. It just feels wasteful to me. Um, as it turns out, the yolk makes the bread feel kind of gummy. So going with the mix of egg whites and egg and whole egg is like the way to go with this. I tried to formulate it with whole eggs, but it's kind of the way I end up having to do this. And then lastly, we have one tablespoon of either lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. I tried to use lemon juice at first, I liked it, but when I switched over to apple cider vinegar, I feel like it had less of a flavor on the finished product, so that's what I'm going with here. But if you don't have that, lemon juice will work. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna add all these ingredients to our wet ingredient bowl and whisk. Now as a note here, this water is warm, but not boiling, you don't want hot water, just a little bit of warmth, because it helps with the uh, kind of mixing of the flaxseed. seed. 
And now we're just gonna give this thing a quick whisking to combine all the ingredients. Now we're gonna pull our dry ingredients back in here and pour our wets directly into the dries. Now watch this very carefully because kind of a cool reaction happens here. The coconut flour sucks up a lot of the moisture and um, also at the same time the baking soda activates from the cream of tartar and the apple cider vinegar that I put in here. So you end up with this what looks like a liquid and then seconds later it turns into this huge pile of dough. It's actually a really cool thing to watch. So keep an eye out for it. So this is what our bread dough looks like. Now I'm gonna get a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and catch up with you guys in just a second. All right guys, we're just gonna actually create a pile of dough in the center of this parchment paper. Now, um, I did get some suggestions in the vlog that I made where I was kind of showing you guys my process for inventing this bread. Some people had suggested that I use a bread pan and I actually did try that and I tried it again after I read all the suggestions. And what ended up happening is I would have needed a specialty bread pan because I don't wanna make a ton of dough of uh, bread here. I want this to be kind of like, single serving ish or you know a couple people could eat it i don't want you guys left with a loaf that's using like three cups of almond flour and it just becomes an asinine amount um so also i just didn't want you guys have to buy special equipment so what we're doing here is we're actually just going to form a loaf onto uh this parchment paper line baking sheet because i think that's something that everybody has without having to buy any specialty equipment now when it comes to forming the loaf the higher you go the taller the bread will be it will rise a little bit and it will also spread out a little bit but it's not going to rise like super tall so for my purposes, I'm gonna be using this to make kind of sandwiches and stuff like that. So I'm actually gonna form the dough into kind of a taller tombstone shape. This way we can get the height we want on the bread without using a lot of ingredient. Um, so that kind of keeps it nice for you smaller households, kind of like I live in. Now, as a note, if you wanted to make like a baguette or something, you can just pull the dough in kind of like a long form and it does great there as well. Also, if you wanna score it to make it look prettier, just take a knife and cut some scores in it. It's not really necessary since there's no skin on here, but it does make it look cool. All right, everybody, here is the dough that's gonna be going into my oven. Let me kind of get a close up on this for you guys. Like I said, it's kind of this weird tombstone shape. Don't worry about the little cracks in the top. They will fill in as it rises. Now this is going to go into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for between 75 and 80 minutes. Um, it's gonna rise quite a bit. You're gonna get a nice golden brown crust. And then uh, once we're done there, we're gonna to wanna to let it cool completely before we cut it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this in the oven, show you guys the finished product right now, and then I'll catch up with you for the taste test. All right, everybody, now that you've seen the recipe, it is time for the taste test. Now, real quick, I have a slice of my bread right here. Now, of this loaf, at least the size that I made, um, I'll end up with about six to eight sandwich slices and then the heels, which I usually just turn into garlic bread. But for the purpose of our taste test, we're just gonna be tasting a slice of bread. Now, I'm gonna step into the camera real quick and just show you guys the texture. All right, guys, voice over time because I was standing right under the microphone and the audio was terrible. So I just wanna show you a close up here of the bread so you can see the texture. There's a nice golden brown crust. Um, as I note, I like a firmer crust, but if you wanna soften the crust, just put it in a Ziploc bag as it cools so that it steams the crust. But let's tear it so you can see the texture. But now that we know it looks like bread, let's make sure that it tastes like bread. So here we go with the taste test. So a couple things. First of all, does it taste perfectly like a wheat bread? No, and nothing is ever going to. But what this bread has, is it has a nice yeasty flavor in it and the texture is right. So for me, it is the perfect keto bread. You know, I don't have to worry about any of those nasty ingredients and those modified wheat starches and whatever. This is made with just ingredients that most of us already have around our house. We've got a bread that has a very good bread texture and it tastes mostly of yeast. You'll never get that wheat flavor in there, but you can actually really kind of trick your brain by using some yeast to make it kind of taste more bready. And that is exactly what we did here. So overall, like I really love the taste of this stuff. When I make sandwiches, I've made it to grilled cheese, I've made garlic bread. It seems to hold up well to a variety of use cases. And since you're kind of making this without a bread pan, you can make really any shape that you want. You wanna make a baguette, go for it. You wanna make like a submarine roll, cool. You wanna make burger buns, just split it into like four chunks. It all works. So I'm really, really happy with this recipe and I think you guys are absolutely gonna love it. But with that, guys, I am going to go ahead and close the video. As always, down in the description box, there is the written recipe and the macros. If you guys like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed yet, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.